along with uh, Pem Wright, in recent winner of uh, uh, the Fishing Association Super Cup, and it's our chance to have a catch up since the big day. Uh, asked him a few questions and uh, about the day. Uh, for the draw, um, did you look at the lakes and can you tell us what area you fancied before it all happened? I had a, yeah, with the draw being the night before, I had a little look around just while we were waiting for the draw light, but the lake, they all look beautiful lakes, so well kept, but it was, there wasn't any wind on the, on the lakes themselves because at the time of day it often calms down in the yeah, end. Yeah, 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 that's true enough. Um, so to be quite honest, it all looked nice, Steve. So nothing, you just, yeah. But you, you obviously fancied, from the lads I'd spoken to that fished there on the regular, they said the corners were good, and the ones one out the corners were good also. So straight away, there's eight pegs that you'd fancy out of 21. So yeah, absolutely. I felt personally on the day with the late change with the corners as well. My personal opinion was uh, that changed it as well. The the actual sort of demographic of it all by putting the corner pegs a little bit closer in. That made me think that the ones one in from the corner made them a little bit better as well and evened it up. But you know. They're just thoughts. I think um, they're superbly pegged. <laughs> what can I say? What can I say? Listen, we, we like it. it gives, I loved it. it. Yeah. yeah, 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 absolutely. And long may it continue. Um, so then moving on after the draw, what were your thoughts? Um, not too much that night, to be fair, as I say, because it was dark by then, so you couldn't. No. I, I didn't go and have a look at my peg anyway. I don't know if the other lads did. Loads but. were pre baited, mate. Fair enough. <laughs> um, but then. In the morning when I got there, the wind was blowing in and yeah, all the pegs up, the windward end of the lake looked nice to be honest and I was obviously right on the end of it, so yeah, it looked good. Well that was that's what I said previously about uh, the moving them. The previous year your peg was one away from that. Yeah. How would you have fancied it if you'd have been one away from the corner rather than, do you, do you think that would have uh, changed the uh, overall possibly? Well being right in the corner, I had that luxury of being able to fish up the bank on the pole. That's what I saw, yeah. yeah. Um, you obviously could have done it on a rod, but we all know a, a pole presentation is a lot more precise than any rod presentation you can do, no matter how good you are on a rod. So, no, without a doubt, it was an advantage. It yeah. was, the only thing was, obviously, Mikey fished, did okay as well off of it, won off of it. But yeah, I think it, it worked out nicely. I think it made your peg a better peg than what it would have been one away, possibly. And I think it made the one at the other end probably a worse peg because you were tight on it and uh, the fish seemed to sort of move away from the end. In hindsight, it's a wonderful thing, you know what I mean? But that's how it seemed to do it. I'm just thinking of next year as much as right, anything. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, gotcha. The conditions on your own, yeah, like you said, wind on your shoulder. Um, what was your match plan then? Was it, when you, when you got to your peg, what were you saying to yourself, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do here? I always try to be quite loose and just sort of suck it and see as you go along and let the fish tell you what to do. But, you know, you've got that obvious feature in the end bank, so that's going to play a part if you're going to do any good in the grand scheme. If, the way I'm looking at it, if I'm having to face into the main lake, I'm losing the advantage of the M peg, so yeah, I'm absolutely. not going to be doing any good. So, yeah, the M bank figured a lot in, in my plan. I spoke to a few local lads up there, um, good mates, Adam Richards in particular. He pointed him, he gave me a few, few real good pointers, as he did a few other guys, there, but yeah. he was spot on to be fair to him. He said you'd catch up the bank to start with, smaller fish, and he was bang on there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then if you're gonna win, you're gonna have to have a run a big fish somewhere, not up that bank because it seems as though smaller fish live up there. So I sort of set up a short pole line and uh, an edge line, but only fed one to save me bait if it really kicked off. Um, I fed the edge to start with, with sort of two hours to go. Um, and if that didn't work, I'd then feed a short pole line, but I didn't come the day, I didn't actually need to fish a short pole line. Ideal, I just then. fished in the edge. Ideal, yeah. yeah. It yeah. was one of them. No, no, smash it. Um, I've got it. Well, Mikey Williams was catching one. You had a limited view of the other anglers from your peg. Were you aware of him catching, and were you aware of how the lakes were fishing? Uh, yeah, I could see. Obviously, I was facing slightly to my left most of the day. Yeah. Yeah, I was aware Mikey was catching, um, and you're right. I couldn't see anyone else but apart from Mikey really. But then with you sort got of time, nine, you and people letting you know what I suppose to a certain No, extent. not really. No, not really. I just sort of kept myself to myself. But then with 90 minutes to go, uh, I'm not sure who exactly, but quite a, quite a gathering come opposite me and Mikey. So you're assuming it's, you know, we're, we're right in the anyway. mix. Yeah, yeah well, because certainly... it was quite a gathering, you're assuming that we're right in the mix. So just makes you focus even more and try even harder. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you're admitting to 180 pounds, you're like this. What did you think when Mikey weighed in 181? 
Well, that's wrong. I didn't admit to anything. Did, I, no, didn't, right. I didn't have a clue. <laughs> some no. pe- Everybody some was admitting to it for you. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, most of the places I go have got net limits. So the fact that Craig says they're sticking four nets, split the fish and just crack on was a rare treat, to be honest. So I, I could just focus on the fishing, not having to worry about any net limits. So I really didn't have a clue. Um, no, it's, it can yeah. be refreshing, can't it? But yeah. also at times, it yeah. So yeah, on, honestly, I didn't have a clue coming in. But I knew I was obviously caught f- and, and had a nice day and caught a few. But I couldn't, I couldn't have put a figure on it for you. You're hoping no. absolutely. Here's one for you. Where does this rank in your achievement? Oh, right up there. You know, the amount of people that enter this competition to end up on top of it come the end is, yeah, it's a real sense of self Well, I was there on the day and I saw you and I remember seeing John Wincott when he won the Maver and everything and I reckon we could have knocked you over with a feather in actual reality. Yeah, you're probably you know, right, mate. You're you looked right like up. you was in another world as far as I was concerned. Like, yeah. And why wouldn't you be? Uh, I've got to see that a couple of times and I'm a little bit jealous, but you look like you were... Yeah, just enjoyed of, it. Yeah, you know, put in a lot of. I don't go fishing as much as I used to in my younger years. I've got a young family now, but Fair still fact. means a hell of a lot to me when I do go. So yeah, to win something big like you've put on it, yeah, it's a real sense of self achievement, definitely. Brilliant. Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, you were straight on to booking in for next year's competition. Well, let, let's before we go on to next year's competition, let's let's go over some of your results, shall we, for uh, for this year's competition, like because okay. I mean, there's obviously there's a run up to it. Yeah. So I've got you in your first round against James Fletcher at where were you? Royal Berkshire Fishery. Yeah. You've had sixty-two pound. To James is twenty-three. Can you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. Uh, a friend of mine, Bradley Gibbons, and his dad, John, yeah, no, run Bradley. Royal Berkshire yeah, yeah. Fishery. Uh, it's not a place to go very often. I've only been there a couple of times before, but it's a real nice, a bit like this lake here, to be fair. Like a goldy piggledy sort of lake, not, no two pegs are the yeah. same. Loads of small fish in there. So, uh, yeah, it was, no, it was an enjoyable day, nice to go. Yeah, so at that stage, you're not thinking, I'm going to be 30 grand better off no, this year. No, certainly not. year, like ticking but, along. But it's but the next round, you're up against Greg Victor, and you've uh, been to Gold Valley. Yeah. Which we all know, £97, £58. Uh, and then, I can remember this one, because I can remember prior to this, having some banter with Tom over the, yeah, yeah. Over the phone about it. Tom's got um, giant snouter. Right, okay. Oh, that's right. That's oh, okay. I got, got to talking with him because I've got black Russian terries. Oh, okay. But yeah, so you've won and we're into, I'm, I'm guessing, oh no, we're not at Todd Manor yet. No. So you've had £361, so the summer start to arrive to Tom's 154 at Greenridge Farm Fishery. Yeah. Uh, and then here we go, we're into the next round and get uh, up against an old mate of mine, Perry Stonelight. Yeah, Stopped yeah. at Perry's okay. house before. Oh, okay. Um, and you're obviously at Todd Manor here, £432 Perry's had. You win most things with that, don't you? But you've uh, gone and smashed it up with a lot we've just found at the time was your personal best, 526 Yeah. yeah. Um, but obviously you've smashed that since. Um, what a fishery that is. I've got to get myself yeah. down to there. That's great fun. Got to get myself great down fun. onto Hillview, is it? Is yeah, well, the... to be fair, they're all good stuff. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward likes, to yeah. that. Uh, and then Eddie, somebody else I know off of social media, good lad. Um, you've got for this is your final round and a bit tighter affair. This two six three pound to one hundred ninety eight again. Todd Bermana. Yeah. And at that stage, you're thinking, game on, isn't you? It's oh, like... yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, we both, me and Eddie, I've known Eddie for a long time. We're about the same age, um, and we've both been at Todd the week before that in a festival. He's a good lad, any? I like Real him. nice guy. Like yeah. Him. Yeah. Very good angler. Um, so we both agreed to go there because we're both. That's all we, the only place we've been for the last couple of weeks, so we both went there. Not to say he probably went to stitch me up going somewhere else here. But well, he comes up he right up home. here, he comes up to Holders Farm and all sorts because yeah, yeah. I nearly bumped no, into he's him. he's a good guy, yeah. But yeah, no, like you say, just really pleased at the end of that day to be few, yeah, in through the final. for the big shootout, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely, mate. Well, here's uh, the two um, big questions, I suppose, from our, our point of view that we want to ask you. Um, you're straight on to booking, like I said, next year's competition. Can you just tell us your thoughts on the Super Cup competition itself as a competition? Um, Like I said, I've got a young family, so I want to win big things. But where I live in the south, to get to anything else big qualifying wise, it's two, two and a half hour drive. So it's, you know, I don't see them when they wake up. I don't see them when they go to bed. So the fact I could fish something that could be potentially massive money 
possibly only 10 minutes from my house, 20 minutes from my house, be home by five o'clock, it's a big appeal for me. I tell you, what, I could have wrote that myself, to be honest with you. <laughs> I hadn't really considered it to that. I honestly had. Yeah, you know, that is one of the beauties of the competition. Yeah. It can be done locally. And, yeah. and like it, you say. For me, where I live, that's a, that's a massive thing. It might not be as big a factor for someone that lives in Sheffield, Doncaster, no. and Coventry area, because they're blessed with a lot of real nice venues that hold these big events on the regular throughout the summer but for me that that is a big appeal well that's explaining why you southerners are winning it all the time then isn't it? you're focusing on it. it gives yeah. you a level playing field and you're showing these <laughs> leaders, leaders, well that's what it's all about spoken as a midlander i might add not as uh, either of those two and finally what would you say to those thinking about joining next year's super cup that's I spoke when you pay money for anything, cause it's uh, what 50 or 60 pound, depending on when you book in. Yeah, yeah. The way I look at it is, what's the worst that can happen? What's the best that can happen? The worst that can happen, the way I look at it is. You get knocked out. Well, you get knocked out, <laughs> but even if you get knocked out, you've probably gone to a venue that you've not been before. You met someone new, and in my book, that's not that's not a bad thing. I'd still enjoy that day. And that's All what right. Mike, our main man, said. He loves the fact that he's kept in touch with people yeah. that he probably never yeah, would have likewise. spoken to. Yeah, Gone likewise. to fisheries, he never. There's downsides to that as well. I, I appreciate that sometimes you get paired up against uh, a bit of a monkey. Do you know what I mean? It can be I've hard work. I've come across any, to be honest with you. All the guys I've fished against I come have across them all, mate. <laughs> Trust actually, me, I do come oh, across. Sure, yeah. The nature of my job, I actually come, And they probably look like there's a lot more of them than there actually is. So I would encourage people to, to, to do it anyway, and we'll look after you and make sure yeah, that you're it. treated like, right. The worst that can happen is you have a day somewhere you don't go, and you've lost 50 quid. In the grand scheme of things. 50 quid, 50 things. quid, granted, but it, you still had a, a day out somewhere. And the best that can happen is you come away with a load of money. Well, so. potentially, if somebody <laughs> doesn't stand much of a chance, draws against Pem Wrighton, the way I see it is, he's drawn against one of the best anglers in the country. It'd probably cost, if you did it, 200 quid for a day's coaching anyway, like, you know what I mean, all the top anglers. So, potentially, for 50 quid, you could say, well, I'll tell you what, mate, I'll come and sit behind you for the day. <laughs> you can, you can have a buy. And what's the worst that can happen yeah, you get yeah. to fish against somebody different better possibly in a different place and yeah. uh, meet new people yeah no brilliant yeah, thank you very much indeed